Big up to Paysend for sponsoring this video. Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, I'm Liam, a trainee lawyer in London. And today I'm gonna to be sharing four relatively small, but highly effective productivity habits that have effectively shaved off the amount of time I have to spend working each day. I feel like over the last couple of years, everyone has been talking so much about productivity, and there have been tons of you know YouTube channels like this one that have popped up, and people were talking about content Concepts that have kind of become pretty familiar, like time blocking, or I don't know, you know, putting an app on your phone to avoid distractions. And I feel like things have become more and more extreme. You know, people talking about cold showering, you know, what a crazy thing, uh, <laughs> in order to be more productive. By the way, cold showering is amazing and you should watch my video about it. But today I really wanted to go back to basics and just kind of share like four really pretty small habits that I've built in to my daily routine that have made a huge difference. That really I think are one, uncommon, and two, definitely not at the extreme end of things that people do to be more productive. So let's dive straight in and this first habit is to try and overcome what I genuinely think is probably the most universally destructive like problem for people trying to be productive. And that is the afternoon slump. You know, straight after lunch, you've had a relatively high amount of sugar at lunchtime, regardless of what you're eating. And you just get this real like dump of lethargy and really cannot be bothered in that period from like two to 4 p.m. Universally, regardless of your chronotype, regardless of whether you are an early bird or a night owl, like scientists have shown that this is a huge problem. So the solution, which is incredibly uncommon, I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about this, is I found to chew gum mint flavored gum. So this may sound kind of weird, but I, I sort of stumbled across this really because at work, like after lunch, I was trying to chew gum so I didn't have bad breath. And I actually found like when I was chewing the gum, I didn't feel that lethargy that I normally feel immediately after work. So I did some digging, a little bit of research into why that might be. And it turns out it is scientifically proven chewing gum after lunch will help to overcome that afternoon slump. So it turns out there are two kind of core benefits to chewing gum straight after lunch. The first one is that it helps combat sleepiness. So scientists aren't exactly sure why, but the theory is effectively that like for people who have ADHD, who often will like find it helpful to spin something or do something that helps their brain kind of engage while they're working on something else. And that has been found by scientists to heighten productivity. Similarly, chewing gum heightens your cerebral activity. And therefore the theory is is that that helps get rid of that kind of sleepy feeling. And on top of that, scientists also believe that the mint flavor of gum helps to effectively arouse the brain and make it kind of less lethargic. And the second benefit is that chewing enhances cerebral performance. So in a study of around 150 students, scientists at the University of St. Lawrence found that the students who chewed gum immediately before taking a test perform better in the test than students who either chew gum during it or not at all. And this effectively is because when you're chewing, it kind of prepares the brain to perform some task. It's like the brain just sort of warms up ahead of doing a mentally stimulating activity. And so you're more ready to handle the complex or kind of mentally intensive tasks that could be coming your way. Okay, next up, when you're stressed, go to Moscow. And by that, you know, I don't mean to Don one of those big fluffy Russian hats and drink loads of vodka until you don't remember what you're stressed about because while highly effective, that is, you know, a pretty short-term solution. Instead, I recommend doing a Moscow analysis. What is that, you may ask? Well, first of all, we're trying to combat stress here and stress, apparently, according to the Global Organization for Stress, is something that 60% of adults in, you know, developed global economies feel. I think that number is probably even higher today because that research was carried out a few years ago. Most people feel stressed. So this is something that I've kind of tried to build in over the last few years, really, since I started seeing, you know, went to see a psychologist about having too much on and feeling overwhelmed. And it's a strategy taken from business. So in businesses, you know, the most valuable resource is money and so they will carry out a Moscow analysis when working out where to spend that money. M stands for must have, S stands for should have, C stands for could have and W well kind of stands for like want or nice to have. This analysis effectively focuses your mind on actually really what must happen 
what should happen, what could happen, and what would I like to happen, but actually really don't need to focus on right now. And it's not something that necessarily I always do, you know, written down, ascribing each of these things, but I just think it's a really useful way to think. So first step is to work out everything you have going on, all of the things you have coming up in the week, and work out, you know, what is making you stress. So it could include seeing friends, it could include having to go to a birthday party, it also could include all of the tasks you have at work, the spreadsheet you need to do, the budget you need to set, Whatever it is, just write down or in Trello, have everything you need to do, including social things, so that you can see, you know, what is the source of all my stress? Why do I feel so overwhelmed? That in itself is a really helpful exercise. But then once you've done that, I find it incredibly helpful to go to Moscow to effectively think about each of those things as must have. So, you know, circle them in red, like what absolutely needs to happen. Once you've got those things and think about what should happen. And the one point I would stress here is, I think it's really tempting, you know, when we're looking at things, okay, work, that's a must have. Another work thing that I need to do, must have. Instead of thinking, actually, what if I went to that person who gave me that task, you know, who asked me to draft this contract that I don't have time for this week. And I said, actually, can this wait until next week? You know, I hear the client isn't necessarily looking to do this for a couple of weeks and I'm really busy this week. Would it be okay if I get to you Wednesday next week? And they'll probably say yes. So really focus on what needs to happen now? Where are other people putting their priorities ahead of your well-being? Where can you push back? And on the flip side of that, social things, I think are the things that often will think, oh, actually going and seeing that friend for dinner the other night, you know, Beth actually gave a concrete example of this last week. She was feeling really overwhelmed. Her friend sent her a message and said, you know, do you want to go out with me? Beth was incredibly tempted to say, no, I'm too busy. That's a could have. Instead, focus on your well-being. Focus on what is going to make you feel good and is going to kind of make you as productive and happy as possible rather than always just thinking the must-haves are work and everything else comes second to that as either a could or nice to have. Okay third is to exercise first thing each day and yeah we all know that going on runs every day and being that perfect human is really good for you and enhances your productivity and has so many benefits but you either can't be bothered, don't have time, and so stressed, it hurts but what I think is interesting here and this is why it's kind of an unusual hack is that first of all first thing on a morning has been scientifically proven to be most effective. And second, the exercise does not have to be painful. Something like a brisk walk works equally as well as going on an hour long run. In the study, participants completed a round of eight hour days of pretty much nonstop sitting and working with just a 30 minute walk on a treadmill on a morning. And on some of the days, they were allowed to take three minute breaks to go for a very quick walk. And it was kind of very clear in the data that those who did the 30 minute walk were much more productive and much more effective throughout the rest of the day. And second, that those who took the regular breaks to get up and go for a walk also were even more effective than those who were just walking first thing on a morning. So again, it doesn't have to be strenuous exercise. Something that gets the heart rate up, a brisk walk is enough. And the other reason I really love doing exercise first thing on a morning is that you can combine this productivity enhancing habit with listening to audiobooks or podcasts. I found it really weird at the start. I was like, why would you not want to listen to like pumping music while you're running? That's the only way I could ever run. But actually, when you give it a go, listen to a podcast, listen to an audiobook that you find engaging. It makes the time go so much quicker and you're really engaged, you're learning stuff, you're kind of compounding the positive impact of this exercise. And the final reason to do exercise first thing on a morning is that it improves sleep. So it was found in a study comparing different times of doing exercise throughout the day that people who exercise first thing on a morning as opposed to at midday or in the evening slept much better than either of the other groups. And my final uncommon productivity habit is to batch replying to messages and emails. Now I feel like most people have probably heard of batching at least this idea that you're more productive when you group together similar tasks. And there have been tons of studies to show that multitasking reduces people's attention, memory, and uh, somewhat ironically, like their ability to actually switch between the tasks that they are doing. Now, I first came across this idea in Tim Ferriss's The 4-Hour Work Week, where he suggested that you have, you know, two times to reply to emails each day, one in the middle of the day and one towards the end of the day. And when I read that, and I think most people will probably feel this, in my job as a corporate lawyer, but tons of jobs are the same, you know, it's just not acceptable often to reply to emails that irregularly. And you feel like, you know, this is just not something that I can ever implement. But actually, I really challenge that. And I would say that I probably reply to messages once every maybe two or three days and emails, lots of my emails I'll probably reply to within maybe a week or two. So how do I do this? So I think effectively my technique is whenever I'm at work, 
I realize that there's a task that could come in that could be urgent. So I'll have my iPhone on my desk and I'll quite often check to, you know, see a preview of an email to check. You know, is there something that could be in this email that could be an urgent task that I need to get on with in the next hour or two? If so, I'll open it and check. If not, I won't look at that email. I'll leave it unread. And I think that effectively kind of means that probably 90% of the emails I don't even look at in any depth. Ideally, you would just not even kind of look at the emails as they come in. My job doesn't allow that but your job may do. You may be able to just not look at emails for an hour or two and guarantee, you know, nothing that urgent is gonna come in, so I should just stay focused. Once I've done that, I'm then effectively looking for, is this email something that I need to reply to within, say, a week? And, you know, I apply the same rule to messages with friends. If it's not something that requires urgent response, so for example, if I'm at work and <laughs> Beth says, I really wanna cook you a lovely dinner this evening. If I don't reply for two or three days, chances are my dinner is gonna be pretty cold by the time I get to it. So instead, I will obviously reply to that kind of relatively time sensitive message, but for almost all emails and messages, the chances are the response doesn't need to come in the next few days or even the next week. And so I will generally have maybe twice a week, a session of looking through those messages from friends, replying, setting up plans, putting them in my calendar, asking how people are and really focusing on having those conversations for maybe an hour or two, but I don't let them infiltrate my day constantly, replying to the message that comes in when it comes in. I'll leave them unread to make sure I reply, but I just don't put that much importance on replying immediately. Even if you can't do that, you can't bring yourself to do that, you think it's rude, you could just send a holding email saying, I'm really sorry, I'm really busy at the moment, but I will get back to you on this in the next week or so. So yeah, four pretty small things really, you know, chewing gum after lunchtime, going to Moscow when you're stressed to analyze what really needs to happen, what's really gonna make you happier and what can wait. Then doing exercise first thing on a morning, even if it's just a stroll. And finally, batching, replying to emails and messages to make sure you're not constantly being distracted. And before we wrap up on these productivity tips, I have one final hack to speed up and really inexpensively transfer money to other countries or spend abroad or on international websites without conversion fees. And that's using Paysend, today's sponsor. Pay Paysend is an amazing app for any international payments. I'm all about efficiency, as you guys know, and Paysend helps you save time by really quickly and easily letting you transfer money globally. With money transferred from the UK or the US, for example, to European or Asian countries in minutes, where traditional bank transfers can take two or three working days. It's also really cost effective. With my code, Liam Free, you'll get three international transfers completely free, and then Paysend's fixed cost for transfers is in the UK, for example, just one pound. Whether you want to repay a friend for a recent overseas trip or need to make payments ahead of travel abroad, or want to pay your sick video editor on the other side of the world quickly with minimal fees, Paysend is awesome. So yeah, remember you can sign up for Paysend through the link at the top of the description for this video and you'll get three free transfers using the code LIAMFREE. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely also find my three simple steps to have both more time and more brain power helpful. So watch that next. Speak soon.